So there's one software that I routinely use that enables me to automate my entire agency and any other business venture that I go into, for example, my education company. I use this piece of software for everything because it automates absolutely everything that I can do, which then frees up all of my time so then I can use that time on other projects, on whatever else that I wanna do with that time. And it also directly makes me more money. And that software is Zapier. And in this video, I wanna give you an A to Z on Zapier and I'm actually gonna give you some automations. I'm going to show you some automations that I'm currently running within my agency to uh, automate the entire thing. So with that being said, let's jump straight into it. So this is the Zapier backend, right? I've just literally gone to zapier.com, just create an account. I don't need to show you how to do that. This is my backend. So you can see we've got a bunch of automations running right now. We've got a bunch of Zap set up. So I actually want to walk you through how to create the Zap, what makes up a Zap. And then I'll show you some of our live automations here that will apply to running your agency, running your SMMA. So first things first, though, let's go ahead and create a Zap. And by the way, Zapier is free until you hit a certain amount of Zaps. I've not got a link or anything like that. This is just genuinely a software that I use and I think a lot more people should use it. So I want to just show you exactly exactly how to use it to the best of your ability. So there's two things that make up a zap. Number one is a trigger, okay? And then number two is an action. So as it said here, a trigger is an event that starts your zap. So this is what, as the name states, triggers the zap to you know to fire and, and and take action and an action is an event a zap performs after it starts so for example one trigger you could set up and look, there's a few examples here that you can use in terms of like different softwares and whatnot and there's also over 3900 more right so pretty much everything that you want to happen you can do within you know inside of zapier but for example let's just say gmail is the trigger so the event right the event would be for example something like a new email right very very basic so basically what this shows you is that when you receive a new email in Gmail, that would then trigger this zap. Okay, so if we continue here, I'll just select my account. Okay, so I just selected my account there. Then what we would do is we'd actually set up the trigger. So for example, here you've got a bunch of different options, right? But let's just say in the inbox, right? You receive a new email in the inbox, right? That would then fire this zap, right? Because this is the trigger. Now you can test the trigger as well, right? And basically all this does is Zapier just looks for an email, right? Like looks for an email in your inbox and now you would continue. And now what we would do is actually set up the action. So when uh, Zapier detects a new email in your inbox, what do you then want to happen, right? What, what what do you want to happen from that point in? But then maybe you would want something to fire in, for example, your CRM, right? I use Close for the agency, but maybe you use Pipedrive, right? Which is, I know, is a, is a, a very common CRM amongst agency owners. So maybe you use Pipedrive. And so again, what you may do is, you know, when you receive a new email in your Gmail, by the way, this is not an actual zap I would set up because there's not much that I would do from this, but this is, you know, it, it goes to show how Zapier works. So when you get a new email in your Gmail inbox, you then may want something to happen in pipe drive. Uh, okay, okay, so that event could be any one of these following, right? Create a new deal, update a deal, create a product, whatever it is, right? And obviously these are all synonymous with pipe drive. For example, if I was to change this and I was to go to close, which is another CRM, there's gonna be a bunch of different events here because there's different abilities with close than there is with pipe drive, for example, right? So the, uh, uh, the events are all synonymous with the actual software that you choose. It's not like an overarching, this is just a set of events that you can do. It's all, as I say, synonymous with the actual uh, software that you're you're selecting, right? So, for example, if I choose Lemlist here, then you can see there's a bunch of different actions that could that you could select, right? So maybe you receive a new email in Gmail, and then from there you want to um, stop that person. Now, obviously, if you use Lemlist, you'll know that Lemlist actually does this for you. This is just an example. You could stop that person from receiving any more emails. Right? If they respond to one of your outreach emails, you know, you've got a four part email sequence, they respond to email one, but you wouldn't want them to then get the next email in the sequence because they've already responded, right? So you would want to then interact in a personal conversation. So then what you could do is select this action here, which is remove lead from campaign. And then you would go through your process, just make sure that you select your account, which is, I've actually got it logged in here. Okay, so the connections um, expired, so I would have to reconnect, which is super simple to do. And then you would just go um, continue and, and that would be your zap. So that would mean that this zap specifically, when you receive a new email, right? When you receive a, a new email in your inbox, meaning a reply, right? Most of the time, you would then remove that lead from the campaign in Lemlist. Now, 
let me list those this for you, but that's just an example. So what I wanna now show you is some live zaps that we're currently using and show you the structure in the back end. So this is a very, very basic booked call zap. And basically what this does, by the way, I didn't mention before, but you can actually have multiple actions. So you can see here, I've got one trigger and then I've got two actions based on that trigger, right? You can have a you can have 10, 10 actions, right? I've got zaps, which I'll show you here in a minute that have multiple, multiple, multiple actions based on one trigger. Um, but this is a very, very basic book call zap. So this is my Apex book call. So Apex Acquisitions is our lead generation agency for service-based businesses and agencies, obviously. Um, so what this zap states is when there's an invitee created in Calendly, meaning when somebody books in a call, right? So you can see here, invitee created in Calendly. This uh, happens when somebody, as I say, simply books in a call. Well, one main action stems from that, which is a message in Slack, but I have this uh, webhook here, which essentially says, because I have different events in my Calendly account, I only want this zap to fire on one specific event in my Calendly, right? Which is the Apex book call event. So for example, if I go into my Calendly here, this is my Calendly, um, this is my Calendly for Apex, right? As you can see here, um, but you can see I've got different events. So I've got a 15 minute ramp session. I actually don't use these, but like in my main Bax Consulting Calendly account, you know, I've got like, you know, nine different events and there's all different stuff in there you know one of my events is like um a, my onboarding strategy session right another event is a sales call another event is the demo call another event is um just like a client meeting right so like the bi-weekly calls and whatnot so if somebody books in a bi-weekly call i don't want them to get my sales call uh, uh, you know, I don't want them to be fired in my sales call zap, if that makes sense. So I put this webhook in, which essentially says only continue if the event type name, which is just this event here, like the event name, the 30 minute meeting, 15 minute ramp session, 60 minute meeting, etc. only continue if the event name exactly matches 15 minute ramp session. So now that means that this zap will only fire if a book call comes through this specific event, not this one or this one or any others, right? Just this specific event, right? And so now if it matches this contingency, right? Well, now the, uh, the the message in Slack will fire and that's the action that I want to happen by virtue of this book call zap, right? And that action basically looks like so, so I get a message sent in um, a Slack channel, which basically says new sales call, a confirmation email has been sent out. Okay, and then I've got this these few uh, answers here, which gets shown in Slack as a message. So the current MRR of the person, the niche that they're in, and can you invest multiple four figures? And then these responses here are pulled directly from the questions which they answer on the actual book call page. So for example, when somebody books in a call with uh, for Apex, they'll go to this page here, they'll go select this time, and then obviously they have to answer all of these questions. And so what I do then is I take three of the most important answers, which in my opinion is how much they're currently making, what's their niche, okay? And can they invest multiple four figures? And then this gets pulled directly from their answers that they filled out in this questionnaire right here, right? So. That is like a super basic book call sequence, um, but I wanna show you my Bax Consulting um, book call sequence because it's a little bit more in depth and there's a lot more actions to it. So for example, if I come into this one here, Bax Consulting scheduled sales calls. Bax Consulting obviously being my e-commerce agency, Apex Acquisitions being the lead gen agency, right, or the book call agency. But as you can see here, there's many, many actions based off of one trigger. So the same idea applies, right? It's uh, when somebody books in a call. This one though, I only want this zap to continue if the event name exactly matches project scale session. And then from there, we get a channel message inside of Slack again. But also what we then have is a booked call email sequence. So when somebody books in a call with us with Bax and Sorting, they automatically get um, a bunch of email follow-ups and whatnot. And that basically helps our show up rate, right? And it actually also helps to sell the prospect before they're even on the call with us, right? Because of the emails that we have got in place. Now, I'm not gonna go into the email specifically, that stuff is all inside of the Centurion Agency program. But for this right now, you just know that you can actually go ahead and create and update a contact inside of Active Campaign, And then also, as I said to you before, the CRM that I use that I always mention, especially inside of Centurion, is Close because it's a lot more of a robust CRM than something like Pipedrive. It's very, very effective. And so we've got a bunch of actions that we also set up inside of Close automatically when somebody books in a call. Right, so you can see here, we go find or create a lead inside a close, and then we create an opportunity that gets tagged onto the lead that we've created. 
okay? And um, again, this exact zap and a bunch of other zaps are all plug and play inside of Centurion. So the specifics in this case aren't too important, but just know that you can have multiple actions based off of one trigger right here. And then for example, another type of zap that we've got set up is we've got a stopped book call sequence. So if somebody books in a call and then they show up to the call, we don't want them to continue to get the book call emails that we send to prospects from the point in which they book the call to them showing up to the call, right? As I said before, we send those emails to help increase our show up rate, to help increase um, the actual sales call conversion rate itself. But if somebody books in a call, for example, right now, it is 8.27 a.m., right? So if they book in a call, now at 8.27 a.m. and they book it in for today at 5 p.m., right, for example. But our book call email sequence is, is a three-day sequence. So if they hop on the call today at 5 p.m., but then tomorrow they receive an email about them showing up to the call, like, hey, make sure you show up to the call, here's some more results that we've got, but they had their call like five hours ago, for example, that's not gonna look good, right? So we actually have a zap in place that takes those that type of person out of the sequence when they show up to the call. And that's based on the smart views that we've got set up inside of close. So when a new lead goes into a separate smart view and close, that is gonna act as the trigger for this zap to fire. And when that happens, we go ahead and we create or update a contact in Active Campaign. But because they've already booked, obviously they're already a contact inside of Active Campaign because of the previous zap right? The previous zap actually created that already. So by this point, they're already in um, active campaign. So now we just basically update that lead and we take it out of the book call sequence. So now they're not going to get any more emails, right? And we put them into a separate automation inside of active campaign. Hopefully that makes sense. It might not because, you, you know, maybe you don't know anything about clothes and like you don't know what smart view is, etc. But just know that the, the possibilities with Zapier are absolutely endless. And obviously all of these types of zaps here, all of the smart views in close, all of that email automations in the back end inside of Active Campaign, all of that type of stuff um, is inside the Centurion Agency program. And that's why I go through it in the Centurion Agency program because this stuff right here, automating your agency to the absolute max is the most important thing in order to scale to 100,000 a month, barring obviously actually getting results for clients. That's the most important thing. There's no point automating everything if no results are coming out of it, right? But once you've got the results side down packed, then you need to automate as much as you physically can because that's how you're gonna scale. When you scale your agency, everything increases. And so if you, you, know, if you double your agency and that means that your workload then doubles, you're not gonna be able to scale that far because you're gonna to get to a point where you cap out. Whereas if you have these types of automations in place, you can scale with, you know, you could 5X your agency with only 1.5X in your workload. And that's the true key to scale. And Zapier, 100% enables you to do that. So obviously in that video there, I showed you two, three zaps that, are, that we're currently using, but actually in, you know, uh, uh, all of our zaps combined, we're, there's around 25 individual zaps, individual automations. And so how did I come up with those ideas, right? How did I create these zaps? Because they're not pulled from, you know, they're not just like a copy paste thing. Inside of Centurion, I give, all, you know, give all the zaps for you to just import directly into your own Zapier account and just run them automatically. But I didn't have that, right? In order for me to create these zaps, I didn't have just a copy paste ability from somewhere else and just put it into my own account I had to create it and so if you're watching this video right now and you're thinking like how do you come with like how do you come up with these ideas where do they come from what do you do well what I do is I just sit down right I sit down in this chair right now and in this chair I'm in right now and I just think about what I do on a daily basis and what do I want to happen right so for example if you um every single time you take a sales call you then go to a, a CRM or you go to something and you update that lead inside of that C CRM based on the outcome of the sales call right for example if you do that every single time it's an action that you repeat each and every day each and every week whatever it may be but that then should trigger no pun intended an idea for you to come into Zapier and see if you can automate that process. It's the same thing with emails, for example. If you send out, you know, every time you sign on a new client, maybe you send them an introductory email, but you do it every single time and it's manual. Okay, cool. Well, let's go into Zapier. Let's see if I can automate that process. Maybe I could build a zap where when we sign on a new client, we set a trigger and when that trigger fires, they then automatically get an automation, uh, uh, they automatically get an onboard email, right? That email that you're currently manually sending. Or I don't know, maybe um, every single day you have a team call, right? This is another example. Every single day you have a team call and at every, uh, you know, maybe you have it every single day at 4 p.m. And at 3.59 each and every day, you go to the team chat and you send them the link for that call or you send them information for the call. What Maybe you could then create a zap where you automate that 
process so you don't have to keep doing it each and every day. That's the number one thing that I hate doing. The same thing each and every day. Everything that I do now, I'm focusing on making sure that it's only gonna happen one time. The only thing that you could technically say that I repeat are these videos. Every single day I sit down and I record a video, right? However, that is a video that's going to be uh, um, on my channel forever, right? And it becomes a very, very valuable asset. And so that's really one of the only actions I actually repeat. Everything else is automated. Everything else that I do, I'm only doing it once. For example, if I'm building a new funnel, yeah, I'm gonna work on that funnel for maybe a month, three weeks, whatever it may be. But once it's done, I don't have to look at it. And so I would way rather spend a week trying to build out a super complicated zap, right? However, knowing that once I build the zap, it's just gonna run. And that's how you start to really scale your agency or any type of business. Because then you can increase volume and your output doesn't have to increase with the increased volume. And so you can just keep stacking volume, keep stacking volume. And as I say, your output doesn't increase. So you can scale comfortably and profitably, ideally. So that is basically an A to Z on Zapier. I hope it was useful. If it was, make sure you go ahead, smash the like button, subscribe to the channel, and let me know any video ideas in the comments below. What do you want to see? And um, th because this video was actually based on a request that I seen on my Instagram. If you don't follow me on Instagram, it is at it's Kai Bax. And um, make sure you hit me a follow on there. And with that being said, as I say, like the video, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.